Hi, Facebook fans. Sullivan here answering your questions with ATP, Ask the Pastor. And today we have a question about women pastors. Uh, an old friend of mine, a good friend of mine from across the pond over in Germany writes, Dear Pastor, what happens when the congregation has placed one into the office who cannot rightly hold the office? Very abstract. However, he goes on to say, the concrete side of this question is that a church that I am familiar with is in the process of calling a woman. So what do we do with women pastors? Uh, quite frankly, you can't put a woman in the pastoral office. And that's where you, what you're getting at in the first part of your question when you say, what happens when a congregation has placed one into the office who cannot rightly hold the office? Uh, women are outside of the pale of those who can hold the office. Uh, reading through the descriptions in 1 Timothy and in Titus of what Paul says uh, are the qualifications for an overseer uh, or for a deacon, someone who, who fills the office of the holy ministry, uh, he's very clear that these are going to be men, husband of one wife. Uh, so the men only get to be husbands. Uh, we also see this in the ministry of the Lord when the Lord Jesus uh, institutes the office of the ministry. Uh, historically, we've always gone to uh, Matthew 28, the uh, Great Commission, and also the um, oh uh, John's uh, mini Pentecost at the, in John chapter 20, uh, the evening of his resurrection when he comes into the disciples' room that's locked. Uh, they've locked the door for fear of the Jews, and he says, Peace be with you. Uh, and then he tells them, uh, if you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you retain their sins, they are retained. Historically, the church has always looked at these two passages as the institution of the office. And who do you have present? In Matthew chapter 28, it's the 11. Um, and the same thing in John chapter 20, it's the apostles. It's it's the 12, well, I guess the 11 disciples at that point. Um, so the office of the ministry when it's instituted, is only conferred upon men. Uh, St. Paul picks up on this in Second, no, 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verses 12, 13, and 14, when he's talking about the roles of men and women in the church, where he says that I do not permit women to have authority over men um, or exercise authority over men. Well, what kind of authority is he talking about? Uh, he's talking about the authority of the church, the authority to forgive and retain sins, the authority to preach and teach the gospel and administer the sacraments. So scripture is quite clear. Uh, women are excluded from the institution. Uh, this is similar to an, an ATP we had a couple weeks ago with uh, the institution of the Lord's Supper. Can you use elements other than bread and wine in the Lord's Supper? And of course we said, no, you can't use elements that are different than the ones that Christ used to institute the supper. So just as you can't use Doritos, and grape soda or grape juice and have a valid Lord's Supper uh, because that would be violating the institution. So you can't put someone into the office of the ministry who ought not to be or who has been commanded not to be put in there. So to, to be frank, when you see a woman pastor, uh, in spite of what she may be wearing, uh, she's not a pastor. Humans may have put her into that office, uh, but that doesn't mean the Lord has. And if the Lord hasn't put you into the office through uh, a proper divine call and ordination, then uh, you're not in the office. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Now, this has nothing to do necessarily with gender. This just has to do with role. Uh, and this is Paul's point in 1 Timothy. Uh, go to 1 Timothy 2 and read that one. But, uh, but Paul's talking about uh, men being the head and women created as the help meet. Uh, I'll leave that for your reading. You can go there and look at what we call the order of creation. Uh, but yeah, you can't violate the institution. You can't put something in the office that ought not to be in the office or a person in the office uh, that the Lord has strictly forbidden to be in the office. Good question and something we see a lot of as we see more and more folks, especially folks, uh, even of the more conservative bent of Lutheranism, or at least what calls itself Lutheranism, uh, either ordaining women or rapidly moving in that direction and teaching their congregations in that direction. So that's your biblical answer. Thanks for the question. As always, if you have questions, send them to atpholycross at gmail.com. Email us your questions and we'll get to them uh, as soon as we're able to. Until next time.